Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning Welcome to the third lecture of this week for the ongoing online course on architectural or engineering graphics and I am continuing with the yesterday's topic which was development of surfaces for solids and in the previous lecture yesterday we had already looked at how to develop surfaces of various types of regular solids upright right angled regular solids and I was discussing about various methods one thing which was left for me to discuss there which I am starting with the lecture here is the triangulation method of tra transition pieces. Now what these transition pieces are we will just look at with an example here. So just imagine that there is an air conditioning duct of a square cross section 70 mm by 70 mm and it connects to a circular pipe of 40 mm dia through a transition piece. Now if we have to design that transition piece and I mean just before we start to draw if you have seen those air conditioning ducts what are those air conditioning ducts made of? They are made of thin metallic sheet. So this sheet is folded okay. Now this duct they come in standard sizes which is what they seeing here. So this duct of 70 mm by 70 mm square cross section would be a standard duct. This pipe of 40 mm diameter would also be a standard pipe. How do we join them together? So this transition piece will be made by using a plate which will be folded. This has to be designed. This is where the development of surfaces is actually required. So what do you do? So we know that we actually have a bottom square which is where it connects to the square uh, part of the duct and then we have a circular piece which is 70 mm. So how will it be? So we will actually have four triangular pieces which will be joining like this and in between we will have these conical parts of cone conical pieces which are going to be drawn here. Now this method, this triangulation method is actually a combination of the radial line method which we have seen earlier and the, uh, so it is basically a combination where we are doing for cone and pyramids, uh, different polygonal pyramids together using the radial line method. So what we do here is we will start by drawing, so depending upon where the stitching is going to happen, where the sheet is going to be put together. So they have assumed that here is the seam line where the sheets are going to be stitched, the seam is going to come. So if we look at this, we will have this, the half of this triangle. Now for this, we have to look at the actual height, actual slant height and uh, of this. So which is what we are going to get in the elevation. Now this is slant. So you have to determine the true shape of this triangle. So the true shape of this triangle will be determined. So which is how they have taken the true length. So what we are doing here is we are they, very simply they are taking the radial uh, base and then projecting it above to get the true length. Or what you could also do is you could just project and you could make a face parallel on an auxiliary plane parallel to this face to get the actual shape of the triangle. So if I project it here and I want to get the actual shape of this triangle, we can get it here. So either ways, whether you arrive at the true length like this by taking the radial length and then projecting it along the same height or if you take it on a on an auxiliary plane either ways is a correct uh, method. So we draw half of this triangle here. Now what we next have is we have this. So we actually have this piece which is coming here. Now for this piece actually what we have is 
if this cone was extended so the cone which is coming here if this cone was extended up so this apex point was what could have created a circular cone so what what will actually happen is that this this part of the this sheet development will actually be developed like a radial line so we will develop this this is the part which is actually getting cut which we get from here and this is the rest of the part and this circle the circumference of this circle is going to come here so we again divide it into 12 equal parts only the top the circle we divide into 12 equal parts four parts for four filler parts so we just connect to the fourth part this is the part we get and now we have we know that this is where the triangle is going to come we already have one of its sides on the taking this we draw the rest of the uh, triangle again you connect this you get the rest of the triangle you connect this and you get rest of the triangle this is the triangulation method where we are arriving at these transition pieces using a combination of these two methods so this this is how the development of surfaces is fairly important when you are drawing machines and when you are drawing different parts in engineering and architectural structures. I will now move on to surface development for platonic solids. So if you remember there were five platonic solids that we have discussed about. So the first one is a tetrahedron. What is a tetrahedron? We have at each point we have three triangles coming together at each of these points so here also we have three triangles here also we have three triangles triangular surfaces so what we have is for each surface we have three sides and the number of sides the number of faces is also three so that is tetrahedron octahedron is where there are three there are four triangular surfaces meeting at each point so at each point there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 triangular surfaces. So the side for each surface is 3, number of sides, but the number of triangles meeting is 4. That is your octahedron. It is like two tetrahedrons, not exactly two tetrahedrons, but it is like repeating this coming together. Then we have cube, of course, simple, 4 sides and 3 surfaces coming together. Next, we have dodecahedron where the base shape is a pentagon. So, we have five sides on each surface and at each point, we have three of these surfaces meeting. So, you just have to keep all these in your mind before you start to draw. And next, we have an icosahedron which has at each point, <clears throat> we have a triangle meeting. So, the number of sides for the surface is three and at each point, if you look at it here, we basically have five triangles meeting. So, we have five surfaces meeting, five triangular surfaces meeting at each point. These are the five platonic solids that we have. Now, when we go on to develop the surfaces for these platonic solids, we know very clearly what each what is the generating surface so in case of tetrahedron we basically have triangle equilateral triangle octahedron also and icosahedron also for a cube it's square and for a dodecahedron it's a pentagon let's see how these unfold so if it is tetrahedron we basically have a triangular surface it is connected to another triangular surface another and another there are four triangular surfaces each connected to at each point if if i look at this so we basically have these three so if we fold it like this at each of these points we have basically three tri triangles coming together for cube we have already seen it's done it's one of the plat simplest platonic solids that we know of for octahedron what we know that at each point we basically have four triangles coming so at this point i have these four 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 and when i fold it together so if this one goes to the back we will have at each point we will have four of these triangles 
meeting and that is what an octahedron would be so these platonic solids are very simple to draw unlike archimedean solids when we come to archimedean solids then uh, we will see so dodecahedron we basically have a pentagon and we will just draw another pentagon at each of this side so that's how that's a simple drawing procedure we do not have much difficulty in that and once we have this so if we are looking at it from the top so we basically have five five petals and one top and the similar thing is re repeated at the bottom so we have exactly the same shape just that it is connected it could be anywhere it's connected and then we have the same shape repeated so basically in a dodecahedron we have 12 pentagons coming together if you look at this solid which is here in my hands we have developed this dodecahedron using the pentagons so the base surface is pentagon so we start drawing this pentagon and you keep developing the pentagonal surfaces and once you put them all together in case you have to develop then right now it is only what will be seen on this surface if you have to make space for sticking it, it together or welding it together you have to have some little extra pieces which is what we will draw along so we know how these surfaces are going to be joined so probably we will have these small jetting out surfaces which will be drawn along so that is what we will draw when we are actually draw, deciding to develop this into a solid form so these additional for stitching for welding surfaces will be drawn so these will be thin thin very thin strips so you might not be able to see it of course after joining we will not be able to see it but then if we open it up if we, if i open it up we will actually see that some of these surfaces are going beneath so if you if you can see it here now so if you see it here after the pentagon some small folding surfaces have been provided because this was a paper we just had to glue it so if you can see at each end you actually have these small thin surfaces which are there and then they will just be put inside and they will be concealed such that on the top you will only be able to see the pentagon so that's how a oh, dodecahedron will be drawn the icosahedron again it has triangular faces but at each point we have five triangles meeting so in this one we had four triangles coming together now here if you see one two three four five again one two three four five here one two three four five like that so at each of these points it's five triangles coming together so if we just start to fold it and join it together we will get 20 surfaces of icosahedron and all being equilateral triangle so drawing for platonic solids is very easy it's very simple we just have to make exactly same size of shape so same size of the uh, face that we have the moment you make it little uh, more or less we will not be able to stick it together properly so cube is simple uh, I've already shown you how to draw the octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. So we will, we can arrange them whichever way you want, but all of them have to meet together, and you have to keep in your mind the original shape, the final shape of the solid that you are going to develop. Now we will come to surface development for Archimedean solids. Now, if you remember, there are 13 Archimedean solids that we know of. And these solids, they again follow some order. So there is an order, just that there is not just one single shape. In platonic solids, we just have one single shape, which is repeated. And it follows some rule that at each edge, there will be three surfaces meeting or four surfaces meeting or five surfaces meeting. So that's, that's what gives us these five platonic solids. Now, what happens in Archimedean solids? If you remember, 
we have two different shapes two or more different shapes which are coming together but the rule remains so either if we look at each of these archimedean solids we can figure out a rule how these solids will be formed so we have these uh, 13 archimedean solids let us go over each one of these if you go to read about these archimedean solids and you remember what are these archimedean solids made of like what shapes then you can draw them conveniently so the first uh, and the only important thing is to know what each of this archimedean solid is made of so we have this cuboctahedron which is made of eight triangles and six squares so what we have is that at each point we have four surfaces meeting and these four out of these four surfaces we have two squares and two triangles equilateral triangles so when all of these come together what we get is actually a cuboctahedron so overall we have 14 surfaces only here the development process is again very simple you can start from anywhere maybe we have started from this square and then you just keep drawing the remaining surfaces the only thing that you have to remember is at each point point four surfaces should be coming so here and this surface will come and join so we will have this one going here and this one coming here again here we have 1 2 3 for this point this one goes here and this surface goes here and joins for this one we have 1 2 3 and this one will come and join not here but here like that so we will actually have the overall system now sometimes what you may actually get confused with is where to draw the next triangle so instead of this if you had drawn this triangle probably this would go wrong so every time we make it we have to remember where this is going to go and meet so we know that this is going to go and meet here and we have to keep imagining how this solid is finally coming up so this is for cuboctahedron then we have a truncated tetrahedron what a truncated tetrahedron is you remember tetrahedron it has four triangular surfaces now if i chop off the triangular surface each of the a uh, pointed edge of the tetrahedron i will get a hexagon there so what i will get i will actually get four tetra four hexagons because it has uh, these four surfaces four triangular points and so what we are getting here is these four hexagons and four of these triangles what size totally depends upon how you are cutting it right so for that what you really have to do is suppose i imagine that this is the tetrahedron that i have and now if i want to cut it like this so this is where i am going to cut it so i will get the shape that i am going to see as the hexagon and i will also get the remaining portion which i will be seeing as the triangle which is which is the remainder of it so we have to first calculate approximate what is the size of this that we are going to get and then we will be able to join it so this is for truncated tetrahedron it is simple it is not very difficult now if you look at this you can extend this and you will get the same triangular faces as we were getting right so it is exactly the same uh, if you look at how tetrahedron was drawn and now this has just been truncated so that's what we are seeing here we have a truncated octahedron so again if you remember how the octahedron was being drawn and what the shape of an octahedron was and at each face if it is again a a, a, a triangular surface that is coming together so if we chop it off now in an octahedron we actually have four triangles coming together so if i cut it i will actually get a square there and the remaining portion of this triangular face has become a hexagon so which is what we are going to see again so and again at each point what we are getting there are total 14 uh, faces 
for this truncated octahedron. Eight are hexagons, six are squares, and at each point we are going to get the four surfaces again. They will be meeting. They will be meeting together such that eight hexagons and six squares come together. Now truncated icosahedron. What was icosahedron? We again had we had twenty. Triangular surfaces, equilateral triangular surfaces, such that at each point we have five triangles coming together. Now, if I if we chop off, if we truncate each of the point on uh, icosahedron, we are going to get we are going to get a pentagon. So instead of the triangles, now we have the pentagon. Which is joining all the six surfaces, and the triangle has now been truncated to result in a hexagon. So it's doubled up because we have chopped from three sides. We've truncated from three sides, and the filler surface is a pentagon. So uh, originally it was icosahedron is twenty faced uh, solid. So finally, what we get is. These twenty hexagon, which are resulting from the twenty equilateral triangles which we were drawing, and the rest of the filler ones are these twelve pentagons. So, if you remember how to draw icosahedron from the same thing, we will be deriving how to draw the truncated icosahedron. So, if you look at this, this is the truncated octahedron, which is what we're going to get. So, we see the Hexagonal shapes and the six squares, and if you open it up in this fashion, which is shown on the screen here, we will actually get a solid like this. So this truncated he uh, octahedron looks like it has been derived from a square, but it has actually been derived from an octahedron. So what is this great rhombic cuboctahedron? This is further truncation of cuboctahedron. So cuboctahedron was derived from a cube. When we were actually cutting a cube, when we were truncating a cube, so we were truncating it like this. So when we cut the cube like that, we were getting a triangular surfaces, and here we were getting the square surfaces on the faces. That is what a cuboctahedron was. Now, once we have this cuboctahedron, further this point, these points that we were getting, which had Two triangular surfaces and two square surfaces. If we further chop them off, so what we have is we have the square which is filling it up. Then we have these octagons, and this place which was the triangle, we will get a hexagon. So we have finally we have for a rhombic cube octahedron, we have twelve squares, eight hexagons, and six octagons. So If you if you derive it from the cube, the square which we originally had, so the square face, another square inscribed in that square was what the square size for cube octahedron was, and the triangle made with the side of the equilateral triangle made with the side of that inscribed square was for. Cube octahedron. Now, when we are talking about this rhombic cube octahedron, we are looking at another square, uh, which is further truncated. When this, in such a manner that we derive a hexagon, we inscribe a hexagon within this square of the cube octahedron, and this is the side for square, which is the same. If you look at it here, this is the same side for each one of these. So we get eight hexagons, six octagons, and twelve squares to develop this cube octahedron. Similarly, if you look at this, this is dodecahedron. So we know how to draw dodecahedron. It is coming out of the uh, pentagon. So now this pentagon is again chopped. So what we get? We get twelve decagons where this. Is actually a ten-sided polygon. The triangles are now turning into hexagons, and the remaining surfaces, which are like these, are again giving us squares. So this rhombicosi, uh, this rhombico, I dodecahedron is 
from the truncation of dodecahedron. Truncated cube is simple. So, we are just truncating the cube in such a manner that it is not in cuboctahedron we were truncating the cube such that it was giving us a square. Here it is giving us an octagon. So, if you look at this, so this is actually a truncated cube. In this we are truncating the cube in such a manner with these planes, 8 planes in such a manner that at each surface we are now getting a, an octagon. So, what we will have? We will actually have 6 octagons and we will have 8 triangular faces. So, that is what truncated cube is. Then we will have truncated dodecahedron. So, we will truncate each edge in such a manner that we get only a triangular surface. So, this is a smaller uh, uh, truncation and at each of the pentagonal surface we get a decagon. So, this is what your truncated dodecahedron is. Similarly, we have other Archimedean solids as well where we have the truncations happening in defined manner. For example, Icosi dodecahedron has triangles and pentagons only unlike Rhombicosi dodecahedron where we had squares, hexagons and decagons. Now, if you look at uh, how each of these are derived, it is dependent upon how the surface is being cut. So, if this is the dodecahedron and if I cut it in such a manner that after truncation, after uh, truncation of this pentagon, we will still get a pentagon. So, if we cut it like this that we still get a pentagon. So, half is cut. So, we will still get a pentagon and triangles here. However, if we cut it in such a manner if the truncation is so small that we get a 10 sided. So, if we truncate it like this if this is how the solid is going to be truncated we will get truncated dodecahedron. Further, if we truncate it we will get great rhombicosi dodecahedron. So, there are basic families of Archimedean solids which we get. So, we are deriving these out of cubes, we are deriving these out of tetrahedrons, uh, octahedrons. So, from the same platonic solids we are deriving the families of Archimedean solids. We just have to know how these solids are going to be derived, how the truncation is happening. Is the truncation happening in such a manner that we for a pentagon here, if I truncate it in such a manner that, that I get another pentagon. This is also one way of truncation or I could get a decagon. This is another way of truncation. So, depending upon how the platonic solids are being truncated will tell us what kind of Archimedean solid are we deriving. And we have to be very clear about how each of these solids is coming out. Read more on Archimedean solids. This is just an introduction. And if you are clear which family is this. So, either it is a cube family or a, a tetrahedron family or a dodecahedron family or a or an icosahedron family, we will get we will be getting three or four solids depending upon further truncation. So this is how the fundamental of drawing developing the surfaces it remains the same. We just have to draw these in such a manner that the number of surfaces coming together at each point it remains the same as per the rule. The sizes of these are same throughout the surface which has been developed and in this manner we will probably be able to draw for any Archimedean solid. So, that is all in the lecture today. I hope that you will be able to develop surfaces and have fun drawing and developing some of these solids. So, thank you very much for joining me here today. See you again tomorrow for the last second last lecture of this entire course. Thank you and bye-bye.